Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us today for a webinar on how to get more out of Turbo Integrator, best practices for features you may not be using. First, a few quick notes as we get going. Today's event is being recorded for future viewing and we can send a copy of these slides after the event. And during the presentation, all attendees will be muted. If you have a question, type them into the Q&A section and we will try to answer them as we go along. But if we don't, we can certainly answer them afterwards. We know that some of you on this call are here out of curiosity or general education, and some are here because you have an initiative in this area. Either way, we would appreciate you taking just 15 minutes with us over the next week or so for a chat. So in the next day or so, myself or one of my colleagues will be reaching out to you. We hope to get your feedback and just, or just have a brief conversation. First, I'll introduce our presenter. Uh, Tan Chan is a planning analytics senior consultant with Revelwood. Tan has an extensive background with a BBA in finance and also an MBA and over 12 years of design and implementation experience using planning analytics. A quick rundown of today's agenda. Uh, we'll be talking a little bit about uh, Revelwood and our capabilities. Then Todd will take you through how to format it, formatting numbers to string, changing dynamic subsets, and then we'll finish off with searching for files. And then we'll discuss next steps. So a little bit about Revelwood. Revelwood is an IBM Gold business partner, and we have been in business for over 25 years, helping FP&A professionals solve their business problems. We have done hundreds of successful IBM planning analytics implementations worldwide with all types of companies that span various industries and sizes. We have a very deep bench of certified planning analytics consultants, and we pride ourselves in bringing not only the technical expertise, but also the business expertise needed to help with your FP&A needs. So with that little bit of background on Revelwood, I'll now pass it over to Tan. Tan, you'll take it from here. All right, thank you, Stan. Hello, everyone. Um, so for today's session, we will be reviewing some Turbo Integrator functions that uh, the TM1 community as a whole, uh, we find is not really using all that much. Um, so recently, within the past couple of years, a lot of customers have contacted Revelwood to request that we do uh, performance tune-up on their system. Um, so what a performance tune-up is, is essentially just a health check or a diagnostic check where the customer asks um, Revelwood to take a look at their existing code to find areas for improvement. And sometimes, you know, these uh, performance tune-ups can result in an actual optimization of their system where, you know, if your their model has been in existence or in use for the past, let's say, three, four, five years, it may not be running as fast as it used to be, or, you know, the, as with all businesses, you know, processes change, reorganizations occur. And so the way the, the model was built originally may not be how it should be used um, today. And, and there could be some op optimization opportunities um, to, to improve the system and how it runs. Um, sometimes with these health checks, it turns into a training session where we actually um, go over best practices and new functionality with the developers that work within the customer's organization. And just going over you know, how best to write a triple integrator process so that it runs more um, as optimally as possible. And then um, sometimes it's just simply as easy as just bringing older code up to date as IBM releases new functionality and new features. So like I mentioned over the last couple of years, um, a lot of what Revelwood um, believed to be standard or you know best practices in terms of um, what functions to use and you know um, how to design a triple integrator process are, are really not known or aware of um, by our customers. So you know temporarily um, from time to time, um, IBM will release new functionalities or new functions that may help um, you know perform a specific task or new parameters to help um, old functions run more efficiently. And with these releases, you know, customers may not be aware that they're available. 
so this is where Revelwood will come in and take this opportunity to educate not only the uh, developers, but also the business users on how to optimize their system. And so today we'll be going over a few of these features. The first one that we'll talk about is number to string X. This is a turbo integrator function. It um, accepts four parameters. And the purpose of this function, as the name suggests, is to convert a numeric value to a string value. Um, some of you may be familiar with um, a function called number to string, which has been around for a while. Um, number to string also converts a numeric value to a string value. However, it does not allow you to format the text um, you know, within the function itself. Um, the number to string X function is typically used in conjunction with the ASCII output or the text output function. Um, these two output functions um, will only accept text uh, string values as uh, parameters and will not um, accept numeric values. This is why we need to use functions such as number to string X to convert the, the value before uh, passing it through to ASCII output or text output. So the, out of the four parameters, the most important one I would say would be the number format parameter. This is where you, know, you would handle the formatting of the values um, that you want to convert to a string. So the number, the number format uses the same conventions as the Excel custom number formatting function, um, where the hashtag or pound symbol represents an option, optional placeholder and zeros represent um, a required placeholder. Um, the number format also allows you to put uh, symbols such as dollar signs, uh, the pound symbol or any other currency uh, symbols you want to the number. Um, you can also add percentages at the end. And as you can see, because we are using um, the decimal and, and two, place, uh, two decimal places within number format in the example, this function also automatically rounds your values for you. So you no longer need to use round P before the conversion happens. So how would Revelwood use the number to string X function? Um, first of all, it's to simplify your code. You know, no longer do you need to use round P to round your numbers, like I mentioned before. Um, also, because it uses the same conventions as Excel, you can um, format negative numbers within the number format parameter um, simply by using a semicolon to separate the positive and the negative format um, formatting that you want to use. So, you know, if, for those who use number to string um, to, for uh, number conversions in the past, you no longer need to use the if statement to separate positive formatting versus negative formatting. And where uh, would, or when would Revel would use um, the number to string X function? Oh, one of the situations where we've used it in the past is to provide uh, allocation summaries to an audience. Um, if your module or if your model contains an allocation module, you may want to create a report to distribute to the business units that let them know how, how their um, uh, expenses are being allocated or what allocations they're receiving from overhead departments. Um, and so because you know the, the allocation report would be viewed by an actual audience, we want the numbers to be formatted at, as um, nicely as possible so that um, you know, people would understand what the numbers represent. Um, if your model has any drill through functionalities to an OD, ODBC data source, um, you know, instead of requiring the users to export the, the drill through uh, table and formatting the numbers on their own, you may want to create an export file as soon as they uh, enable the drill through, so that instead of having to export and format the numbers in two steps, now all they have to do is just open the export file to see the results. And that way they can pivot or filter um, and do any manual manipulations that they uh, would need to do without having to export and format on their own. Lastly, um, if your business process requires it, you may want to create some load reports to verify data loads um, that you're performing within the system. Um, so this could be downloads of headcount, this could be loads, uh, actual loads from your ERP. Um, 
but regardless of what it may be, you may want to distribute these reports or make it available to the business unit so that they can verify their numbers um, after actuals or while actuals are loading. The next function we'll take a look at is subset and the set. So this function requires three parameters, the dimension, the subset, and the actual MDX expression that you want to attach to the subset. So what this um, function allows you to do is to update the MDX for an existing subset. Um, and it also allows you to change a subset from being dynamic to static or vice versa. To change a dynamic subset to a static subset, all you have to do is just pass an empty string um, through uh, at the last parameter uh, in place of the MDX expression. Um, <clears throat> how uh, Rev would use this set, subset MDX set function? Well, there are situations where you may want to duplicate a dimension. Um, this may come um, when you're creating an allocation model where you want a two dimension and a from dimension. Um, and so you may want to copy the subsets as part of your duplication process. And to do so, what you can do is use the MD, uh, subset MDX get function to extract the MDX uh, code from the source dimension, then use MD, subset MDX set to do, copy it or paste it into the destination dimension. So how would, um, in what situations would you use this function? Um, the most common situation is to improve the process performance. Um, TI processes typically run faster when it uses a static subset as opposed to a dynamic subset. And so typically what Revelwood would do is to convert a dynamic subset to a static subset before we do any processing or before we open the data source. And this just improves the performance um, of the TI process and makes it run faster. Then the last function that we'll talk about today is wildcard file search. So wildcard file search um, takes in two parameters, the file name and the prior file name. So the wildcard file search um, allows you to search a particular Windows folder to find um, a file name. Um, just like with uh, the wildcard search in um, the subset editor, you're also able to use the question mark as well as the asterisk as wildcard characters. The question mark represents one character whereas wildcard uh, represents one or many characters um, in that particular location. And the file, prior file name parameter just tells the process where to begin the search. You know, if the search um, needs to begin at the very beginning, you can pass in a, a blank or empty string as the prior file name, and the function will search all from the beginning of the folder. And what this allows um, the developer to do is to search a folder to possibly run through and use the execute process function um, and, and load data for, from several different files. Um, we've used this at, uh, at customers before where they, they have um, business users who want to submit a forecast but don't, do not have access to TM1. And so what they need to do is just submit or save their particular, uh, particular business, um, business units forecast and, uh, on a network location. And so the network location could contain 10 to 20 to 30 different files. And the process will run through and load each and every one of those files and loop through it without having a developer actually copying and pasting in, in um, the, the file name into the parameter one at a time. Um, this allows you to automate that process and also allows you to run it overnight without having to, someone there uh, babysitting the process. And so why do we do all this? Um, as I mentioned before, it helps um, TI processes run faster and more efficiently. It optimizes um, you know, the functionality of a model and uh, helps the model run uh, faster. Um, it requires less code to maintain an update. So as business processes change, change or report, reporting needs changes, um, you'll need to update less code and it'll be easier to maintain and, and read through the code to determine what needs to be changed. And lastly, um, it will make the code easier to follow, understand, or debug. 
Um, and so if there's an issue with the TI process, no longer do you have to um, read through you know, two or three times uh, the amount of code needed uh, to perform that same function. Um, you may only need to uh, concentrate on one or two functions to determine where the issue lies. And with that, um, let me turn it over to Stan uh, to add some more detail and continue with the presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Todd. So just to recap, uh, today we did a deep dive into some pretty technical details, and we know this can get confusing very quickly. This is where Revelwood is here to help. Whether you're looking, looking to train your team on how to use the tool and the features, or whether you're looking for someone to review your existing model, Revelwood can help you with, with some of the services that you see here. We have over 25 years of experience implementing solutions and helping you define, plan, and prep for what you need. So I want to encourage everyone to learn more about Revelwood and our implementation approach by visiting our website at revelwood.com. While you're there, we also encourage you to visit our Knowledge Center where we offer tips and tricks about all aspects of the planning process, technical tips on the tool, planning tips about the budgeting process, and various tips on other business aspects of your fp a model. So also I would like to remind everyone of our upcoming webinar on June 8th. The topic will be creating paw charts using the new experience and covering the various topics that you see here. And with that said, I just wanna thank everyone for attending today's webinar and hope that you join us for our next one on June 8th. So thanks everyone for attending. Yeah.